Hi, I'm Stacy, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about fixed point. This is a follow up from my algorithm prep video from a couple of weeks ago. Because in order to implement these numbers in the FPGA, we need to be able to represent them as fixed point values. So I'm going to start by using an Excel spreadsheet to demonstrate this. So our floating point number, it has a value from zero to one. So we want to translate that into a fixed point number. So we can multiply it by a power of two. Power of twos are nice because in binary they work out nicely. So say for example, now my fixed point number is going to be from zero to 1024. I need some bits. I need to put my number into binary. So I multiply by 10 bits. So I'm just going to make 10 bits and they are fractionals. First thing to note, so I have my handy calculator here. Say, for example, I want to construct the number 17. Then 17 is made up of 16, which is a power of 2, and 1, which is a power of 2. I set bit number 4 to 1, and I set bit number 0 to 1, because 2 to the 4 is 16, plus 2 to the 0 is 1, and 16 plus 1 is 17. And so using this method, I can construct any integer number with sufficient number of bits by constructing it out of powers of 2. If I put 1024 into my calculator, I can see I need 11 bits. Bits 0 through 9 are 10 bits. So there's my 10 bit. But actually, I've set my 11th bit, which is bit number 10, high. So my fractionals aren't enough. If I were to put in 1023, all of these bits would be set. So that's the equivalent of setting all my fractionals high. But when I go to 1024, I need an extra bit. And that's because your fractional bits are strictly below the value of one. If you have fixed point with a 10 bit fractional, it means that in order to represent the actual value one, you need to have at least one integer bit. So if you just have fractional bits, you can only store numbers that are strictly less than one. You can't store one itself. So I'm gonna give myself an integer bit here. If I were working with signed numbers, I would also need to have a signed bit here, but I'm going to be working with unsigned numbers only today. And so I'm not going to need a signed bit. So this is one way of thinking about it. Another way of thinking about it, if I extrapolate my formulas in my calculator to the right, I'm actually taking my binary calculator and I'm extending it to bits below zero. And so say, for example, now I wanted to put in my calculator 1024.5 because I can construct my binary number from powers of 2. I can have negative powers of 2 and those negative powers of 2 become powers of 2 fractionals. So I can construct 1024.5 by setting the 0.5 bit, which is the minus 1 bit, to 1. This binary format doesn't just strictly work with powers of 2 that are 0 and higher. You can actually use this format with negative powers of 2. And this is how fixed point works. There are a couple of rules when it comes to multiplying fixed point numbers together. I've now taken my fixed point value and I've duplicated it to make it b. And now I'm going to construct my b times b. And when you multiply a number by another number, you, you add the integer lengths and you add the fractional lengths together. b times b is going to have a double integer length and a double fractional length. For b times b times b, I'm going to be adding together the length of b and the length of b times b. When you're doing a multiplication between two fixed point numbers, you add the integer sections and you add the fractionals and that becomes the results length. For addition, if I were to add b and b squared, then I need to make the signals the same length because one of the addition rules is that the integer length and the fractional length must be the same in order to add numbers together. So for example, if I wanted to add these numbers, I would have to sign extend b and extend the b fractionals or truncate in order to be able to add the numbers together. So in this case, I'm going to be truncating the bottom of the fractionals. Well, I'm going to extend my one signal, my one. And then the result for addition is one 
longer on the integers. And using this method, I can add numbers together. For signed values, I'm quickly going to go over signed values. For signed, the rules are exactly the same. When you are multiplying two signed values together, so you count the signed bit as part of the integer, and then when you multiply the numbers together, when they're signed, you just include the sign bit in the calculation. For signed addition, it's exactly the same uh, as well. The result is just the length plus one. So if I add two sign numbers together, then it's whatever length they are um, plus one. The way that you sign extend a sign number is by duplicating the most significant bit whatever value it is for however many bits you need. So if this one's value is zero, then however many bits here, these will all be zeros. So say if I want to extend it to there, then those will all be zeros. If this bit is one, then these bits will also be one. So however many bits you want to extend. So your most significant bit, that's your signed bit, if it's a signed number, is just sign extended up. If it's an unsigned number and it's not two's complement, then you just pad with zeros. And that's a breakdown of the rules for fixed point. So I'm going to go over to my code now and I'm going to show you what this looks like in my code. Remember that you can have bits that are negative. And so we're going to be seeing this in the Verilog code. I'm going to be using negative bit slicing in the Verilog code, which means that I'm going to be indexing my vectors with negative numbers according to these rules. So I'm going to have a minus four bit and that minus four bit means it's this fractional bit in the fixed point. And that really helps keep your head straight in terms of understanding what you're doing with your fractionals and making the code very clear. Here's my code. I've got the window size, which is my capital N. I've got the number of fractional bits and my number of integer bits. And then the size of my result is going to be the sum of my fractional plus my integer. My B integer bits is this parameter. My B squared, B int bit plus B int bit. B cubed, squared int bit plus B int bit. So I'm already setting up the sizes of, according to my multiplication rules, when you multiply, you add the integers. I've already said that like five times. I repeat myself a lot. So the fractional bits, you add the fractionals. B squared fractionals are B plus B. My B cubed is B squared plus B. And this is my window counter. So you can see here, it's window size power two down to zero. It's all integer bits. Zero is the smallest integer bit. And then you go to minus one, which is the largest non-integer bit. I need to cast this into my fixed point format so we can see my absolute underscore n is in my fixed point format. I say my number of integer bits minus one, which in my fixed point spreadsheet, if I have three integer bits, then my most significant bit is called two. So it's three minus one is two. If I have 30 fractional bits, then my lowest fractional bit is minus 30. So in the code, my number of integer bits minus one down to the number of fractional bits. And this is how I define my fixed point number in Verilog or system Verilog. When I cast an integer into my fixed point format, I just take my integer and I plonk it into the integer part of my fixed point. So in this case, the integer part of my fixed point is the number of bits down to zero. So zero is the least significant integer bit and minus one is the most significant fractional bit. And then I make the fractional section zero. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift down by window size power two minus one. And that's according to my algorithm prep. So if I go to my algorithm prep page, B is absolute value N shifted down by N minus one. So I am applying that shifting operation. This three things shift is the same as a normal two things shift, except it maintains the sign bit, which doesn't really matter here because I'm not really working with sign numbers, but it's just a habit of mine to use the triple one for the other direction of this matter. And so then I just multiply B times B equals B2. B3 is three int, three frac, three. Now notice, I don't care what these numbers are. It's all up here. It's all worked out. All I need is I need to set my integer and fractional. I need to do my rules that uh, comply with my rules. And then I can just make this value B plus B is B. After I've made my B and my B squared and my B cubed, I'm going to be multiplying these by scalars and then I'm going to be adding them later. 
And if we go back to my addition rules, we know that the fractionals must be the same length when you add. So in order to reduce them B2 and B3 down to the full length, I just slice the range of B out of the extended version. And I slice out of B cubed the bit range of B. So that's the equivalent of taking that range out of B squared and B cubed. So it's basically choosing that slice of B and B squared and B cubed. B underscore F means full scale. So this is the full scale version of B. The underscore F is the full scale version of B2 and the full scale version of B3. Without the underscore F is the truncated version. And these are all the same length. They're all the size of B. You will notice here that this B value is one, but in my code, I actually have it as 10. And that's just because when I loaded the window counter into absolute value, it needed to be big enough. It's inflating it slightly. But what that means is that when I come to do my scalers, I don't have to worry about it. So now I'm going to be scaling my B1, B2 and B3 values by their corresponding scalars. So B1 times 6, B2, B3 and so on. So I'm creating the scaled versions of B1, B2 and B3 according to what I need. And then if we go back here, we can see that this formula is 1 minus and 2 minus. So I need to create fixed point representations of these numbers. So if I'm adding 1 plus something, I need to create the fixed point value of one with the number of fractionals I need in order to add that correctly to the rest of the formula that's also fixed point numbers. So here I create a one constant which has integer bit values one and fractional bit value of zero. And the two constant is an integer bit value of two and a fractional bit values of zero. So then I construct my polynomials and that is these polynomials here. So this is handling the case. So this case bit here with my counter, which is the window counter, that's this guy. And that's it. That's the implementation. You will notice that I don't have any registers in this. If we go back to my print page, I talked about my clock cycle register plan at the bottom. I am intentionally not doing that. I'm doing this from a point of view of someone who's a beginner and they just do, you just go, oh, okay, I'm going to do multiply and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. And I don't want to clutter up my fixed point explanation with registers and clock cycles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a timing report on this code and we'll see what it looks like. Then I'm gonna go back and put registers in. I'm gonna simulate it. So there's my triangle counter, and then this is the output window. What's interesting is that this is functional, right? I could simulate it. Uh, but if I were to put it in hardware, it would fail pretty badly. And so that's one of the things that we must remember is that simulation isn't everything. You can have a piece of code that works perfectly fine in simulation, but the timing report for this will fail. Just because it works in simulation doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work out in hardware. So I'm thinking about making this into like a little bit of a series where I go through all the little bits of like a signal processing example, like this will be the windowing and then we'll also do one on FFTs and filters and things like that. And we can put like a little signal processing example together and put it in hardware and demonstrate it like that. And maybe we'll make like a little spectrum analyzer. I thought that would be quite cool. I'll make a playlist of like all the relevant parts of it. So thanks very much for watching. I appreciate you and I'll see you next time.